Election Day is five weeks from today, and tonight you're going to see the first debate between the major party candidates in the race for Oregon governor. Live from Roosevelt High School in North Portland, this is the debate for Oregon's future. And good evening, everyone. I'm Jeff Gianola, and welcome to the debate for Oregon's future. And tonight's debate is very unique. All of the questions to our candidates will be coming from young people, high school students from across this great state who are here to have their voices heard, and we will listen tonight. Now, each of the candidates will have one minute to answer their questions, and so all of our students can have their questions answered. We're trying to limit any rebuttal time, but if that does come up, then it's 30 seconds, and we'll kind of play that by ear as our debate goes on tonight. And with that, I'd like to introduce our candidates. First, Republican candidate, Representative Newt Bueller, thank you for being here. Democratic candidate, Governor Kate Brown, thank you for being here, Governor. And our independent candidate, Patrick Starnes. Patrick, thank you for being here. And with that, I'd like to introduce Shasta Kearns Moore from the Pamplin Media Group, who will be standing by with our students who have their questions. And Shasta, the first question to you is, who is our first student question tonight? Our first student questioner, Jeff, is Jeremy Clark. He is 14 from Portland and wants to ask about climate change. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much for being here today. My question is for all three candidates. I'm concerned about the adverse effects climate change will have on our economy, our environment, and our people. When you were a kid, you didn't have to consider the possibility of an inhospitable climate in your future. But I do, and so does my whole generation. What will you do to ensure my generation has a sustainable climate to support us all? Furthermore, do you support the Clean Energy Jobs Bill? And Newt, we'll begin with you. Well, thank you very much, Jeremy, for your, for your question. And, and Jeff, thank you for hosting. And thank you to all your, your student colleagues who've put so much work into, into this debate. Uh, Listen, uh, climate change is an important issue. I believe in global climate change and in global warning. Uh, remember, as a, trained as a scientist, I think that policy should be really data-driven. The data is overwhelming in my mind that this is occurring. And it's why I broke from my party and supported the legislation in the 2006 leg legislative session to transition Oregon away from coal-based uh, electric generation to clean renewables. Uh, I think that was smart policy. But you're absolutely right. We have to balance that also with the needs of our citizens, hardworking Oregonians who increasingly struggle to pay their monthly bills. Unfortunately, some of the policies that Governor Brown has passed has driven up the cost of simply living in this state. So there's always a balance, but we have to address it, and we have to begin addressing it now. Governor Brown. Jeremy, I really appreciate your question because I believe that future generations will judge us not on the fact of global climate change, but what we've done to tackle it. And I believe that young people, our uh, folks living in uh, rural communities, our communities of color, and our low-income communities are hardest impacted by the changing climate. That's why I've fought since I've become governor to make sure that we are tackling global climate change we passed our lowest, lowest carbon fuel standard, reducing the carbon intensity of our fuels. Uh, we passed the coal to clean, and we also passed legislation to implement public transit in every single community around the state. Moving forward, I believe very strongly that we need to tackle uh, reductions in our carbon emissions, and that's why I am working on the Clean Energy Jobs Bill and look forward to working with you and other young people to get it passed in the 2019 session. But I don't think that's all we can do. I think there's much more we can do, and that means making sure our natural resources agencies have the tools and the resources Governor they Brown, need. Governor Brown, the minutes. Oh, up. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> The same question to you, Mr. Starnes. Thanks, Jeremy, for the, the good question, the very important question. And thank all the other students for coming. And thanks, Roosevelt, for hosting us. Um, one of the important parts of global warming, as you may know, is the, the forests, the old growth forests, is a, are lungs to our climate. And they, they capture a lot of carbon. And I have a, a strong background in protecting old growth forests, like the Elliott State Forest. But I also want to pitch you a new idea along with supporting 
the, the measures that have been discussed earlier. Um, Israel is producing uh, electric freeways. And I could see Oregon developing with ODOT uh, electric freeways all over the state. So we wouldn't have to charge every 20 minutes and we could travel from Medford to Portland or from Ontario to Tillamook on our state highways. Thanks for the good question. All right. Shasta, who's our next question from? Yeah, our next question is from Olivia Cooper. She's 17 and she's from Prineville and she wants to ask about e-cigarettes for teens. Okay, and Governor Brown will start with you. Go ahead with the question. Uh, in 20, so my question is for Governor Brown and Representative Bueller. In 2015, you both helped raise Oregon's legal age to buy e-cigarettes and tobacco products to 21. Despite the law, Oregon students like me continue to see vaping in our high schools among students from all walks of life. Last month, the FDA declared jewels and e-cigarettes to be an epidemic among teenagers, putting them at risk for lifelong addictions due to these devices. What more would your administrations do to help increase protections for young people from smokeless tobacco and other harmful substances? Well, I really appreciate that question because um, my father died from a chronic heart disease. He was a lifelong smoker. And I think it's critically important that we prevent uh, young people from starting and getting addicted uh, to nicotine. And so I think there's two key pieces. Number one, education, and number two, enforcement. So my administration will continue to work to make sure that we are educating young people uh, in our schools around the state and will continue to work to make sure that we are enforcing the law and making sure that young people aren't starting at an earlier age that they, than they should be. Mr. Bueller. Yeah, thank you for the question. It's a topic I feel strongly about being a physician. It's one of the reasons I supported the, the legislation to, to move the age to 21 to the purchase of uh, uh, tobacco products uh, in Oregon. And it's particularly important for youth because the effects of nicotine on the developing uh, brain. Uh, and I'm sorry to hear that there's still students uh, using those products in, in your school and in your community. One of the important abilities, uh, Governor, to to lead and make impact is use the bully pulpit to explain to kids and to communities why it's so important that you shouldn't use these kinds of, of, uh, of products and, and specifically drugs of all kinds. Uh, that's something that I will use to my utmost as your next governor to make the case, to make the strong case of why it's so important to not only, not only to avoid tobacco products but uh, all kinds of Ill illicit harmful drugs. Could Did I that answer your question, Mr. Ten, Starnes? Ten seconds. Uh, I want to bring your attention to the new measure that the corporate stores have, are trying to get us to vote on. I'll be voting against it because it affects the sin tax that we have in place on alcohol and cigarettes that help us fight um, those addictions. So Thank check you. into that measure, please. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Our next question, Shasta. Our next question is from Shimon Dashgupta. He's 16 and from Portland. He wants to talk about gun control. My question is for Governor Brown and Representative Bueller. Since, kid, since kids don't have the right to vote, it's the adult's job to represent their interests. However, they are putting their selfish needs ahead of us as they don't want to lose their guns. So with all the school shootings happening around us, which must stop, and I already know you both have supported some gun restrictions, but I want to know what more will you do to stop this senseless violence? Governor Brown. Yes, and the last time I was here at Roosevelt, I was here uh, for the March on Our Lives, and I was so inspired by the students that spoke out. It is unacceptable to me that our students, whether they're kindergartners or college students, are being trained to be prepared for mass shootings. That's why I fought for comprehensive background checks, I fought for the red flag laws, and I certainly supported uh, legislation to close the Charleston loophole. I think it's critically important that our students feel safe on college campuses and kindergarten campuses. That's why I support an assault weapons ban. I think we need to increase the age of purchase to 21, and I also believe we need to uh, ban bump stocks as well. But most importantly, we, we need to move forward, and I think it's so critical that student voices continue to be heard um, at the Capitol and on our campuses as we work to make uh, everyone feel safe, not just, frankly, on school campuses, but on our places of worship and certainly in our homes. Okay. Mr. Bueller? 
Yeah. Thank you for your very important question. Uh, certainly, as governor, one of your primary roles is to keep everyone safe, but especially children in their schools. And it is one of the reasons why I have supported uh, uh, common sense gun safety legislation, uh, legislation uh, to close the, uh, the boyfriend loophole, which uh, clearly is an advantage of decreasing uh, uh, deaths uh, to women and children, importantly. And it's uh, been particularly impact be impactful to me as a physician to see the effects of, of these types of uh, violent impacts, not only on people, but on communities. And I would also support other common sense gun legislation, uh, uh, similar to what was described by uh, Governor Brown, banning, banning of bump stocks, uh, 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 preventing people under 21 years of age of uh, purchasing assault weapon, and also a three-day waiting period on the purchase of a handgun. Uh, that is uh, legislation done in other states that have made real positive impact, and we can balance that with the rights of the Second Amendment. Mr. Starn. Yeah, I, I would like to uh, let you know that I used to drive semi, and uh, there's a special license for that that's different than an auto license, just like the airplane pilots have to have a special license. So I think that the dangerous equipment we're talking about, the operator should have a special license. I would like to rebuttal, your please. I would yes. like a rebuttal, please. What's that? I'd like a rebuttal, please. Rebuttal, 30 seconds. Thank you. Governor Brown. I believe that we have the right to be safe from gun violence. And I showed up at the Roseburg campus after the tragic shooting. That's why I have used every single tool in my tool book to make sure that our communities are safe. My opponent voted against a very important tool, and that was our lead flag law that allows courts to take guns away from folks who are a danger to themselves or to others. It's been extremely successful in Oregon, and it's prevented a number of deaths. Mr. Bueller. Yeah, uh, let me just uh, push back and explain. Uh, I do think it was a good idea. Unfortunately, the legislation that Governor Brown passed in this state was flawed, and flawed in two very serious ways. Uh, one is it's just not enough, in my opinion, to take guns away from someone who's suicidal or homicidal. They should also be referred to mandatory treatment. Uh, I, I'm concerned about their risk if they don't get treatment just because you take a, away their gun. Uh, and importantly, uh, I think there is, is, a, is a need to make sure that people have their, their, their voice heard in court. Uh, uh, that was a, a big flaw in, in Governor Brown's uh, legislation. Shasta, our next question. Yeah, so 17-year-old McKeeley Miller is from John Day. She would like to ask about rural internet access. <laughs> my, question, my question is for Governor Brown and Representative Bueller. The lack of reliable and high-speed internet is a very prominent issue in my frontier community. It sets a barrier in the classroom and workforce. It also inhibits the use of technology in our school system. As governor, what would be your approach to solve this? And I believe we start with Mr. Bueller. Yeah, uh, great question, and, and uh, a topic I hear frequently traveling around uh, uh, frontier Oregon and eastern Oregon, and certainly being from rural Oregon, I understand the importance of having a le level playing field to make sure that uh, the opportunity and achievement gap that unfortunately has has developed uh, between urban and rural Oregon is, is closed, uh, and that is a, a key uh, tool that all Oregonians, especially children in their schools, need to have access to. I'll work diligently to be that governor who brings Oregon together, closes the achievement and opportunity gap, uh, not only in rural Oregon, but also in, in some of our urban communities. And uh, the divisiveness and, and the difference of opinion between urban and rural needs to close. I believe that I'm uniquely qualified to, to bridge that gap and, and create one Oregon which we all desire. Governor Brown. It's so important for students across the state to have access to the internet. I believe that the internet can literally bridge the urban-rural divide. And that's why I've worked uh, with the Oregon universities to uh, expand broadband access to rural communities around the state. It literally gives people access to the entire world. And most specifically in Grant County, worked with the Republican leader to invest uh, $1.8 million uh, to build internet access uh, in uh, John Day and Prairie City. Uh, it's so key for our rural communities that our schools be connected, that our homes be connected, and of course our businesses be connected. It gives rural Oregon the opportunity to grow and thrive and create good paying jobs in every single nook and cranny across the state. 
Okay. Mr. Starnes? I'm the only one that's been on a local school board of only 200 kids on the McKinsey uh, School Board, and we struggled with that directly, uh, having access. And I feel like the, the biggest important job for the governor is to connect these dots that are already existing, because the Car Corps of Army Engineers had a, a T1 line through our highway, and we just need to have a governor that can connect these dots and get us connected to the whole world in the 21st century. You okay? Shasta, our next question. Thank you. Our next question is from Daisha Pruser. She is 16 and from Portland. She'd like to ask about mental health. Good evening. My question is for Governor Brown and Representative Bueller. Considering the high student to counselor ratio across Oregon schools and the lack of resources readily available to students, what things, such as school-based health clinics, do you plan on implementing to ensure all students have the opportunity to receive the help and guidance they need if a counselor is not available? Governor Brown. Well, thank you for that question. And I've heard from many students like yourself who feel that it's so important to have access to but not just mental health care, but medical care in the schools and of course having access to more school counselors. So I would certainly work to make sure that we have more school counselors in our schools. The counselors I've spoken to said they uh, meet the needs of sometimes 500 to 800 students. So that's not okay. And so we're working to make sure that we have more counselors in our schools. I'm absolutely committed to expanding access to uh, school-based clinics. I think that's absolutely critical. And most importantly, and I led the way to make sure that every child in this state, regardless of their immigration status, has access to health care through the Oregon Health Plan. We were able to pass Cover All Kids with bipartisan support, Republicans and Democrats coming together because we know it's so important for our children and our students to have access to health care. Mr. Bueller. Yeah. Thank you for your question. I'm, I'm very passionate about this. Uh, passionate as a physician because it's disappointing to me that in Oregon we have one of the worst mental health care systems in the entire country. One of the highest suicide rates and, and unfortunately under Governor Brown's administration we have shown minimal progress in improving this. Uh, we need to get more resources into our school. We need more school-based health clinics. Uh, we need more tip lines. We need more peer-to-peer -peer counseling, which shows clear advantage. Uh, I'm very proud to, to say that, that my wife, Patty, has led the way in Central Oregon in bringing lines to life to Central Oregon, which shows clear advantage in decreasing uh, uh, youth attempts at, at, at suicide. Uh, those are all the kind of common sense uh, approaches that will actually improve the situation in, in Oregon and, and hopefully provide that kind of, of support that so many of our students find that they need uh, in our 21st century. Mr. Starnes? Besides uh, my over 10 years of being on the school board, elected three times, I'm actually the only candidate that served in a classroom. I was a special uh, teaching assistant with special ed. As a 12-year-old, I was emotionally disturbed. I was one-on-one -on -one with them. So I found that firsthand is so important but what, how I differ is that we need a specific fund for health care, and not just health care, but a specific fund for mental health care, not just for students, but for veterans and, and many vulnerable populations. Thank you for that great question. Our next question, Shasta. Thank you. Um, this next question is also one that's near and dear to my heart. Uh, Adi <laughs> Solomon is 15. He's from Portland, and he'd like to ask about disabilities. My question is for all three governors. Good evening. As Shasta said, my name is Adi Solomon, and I have a brother who, among approximately 800,000 Oregonians, has a disability. More specifically, autism, which is a neurodevelopmental disorder. I wish to advocate for him and all Oregonians with disabilities. Every human life is priceless. So what do you specifically intend to do as governor to ensure that every adult or child with a physical or, develop, or uh, mental disability receive the proper and appropriate care that they deserve to ensure that they are valuable and contribu contributing members to society. Okay, I believe we start with Mr. Bueller. Yeah, thanks, thanks for your question. I'm, I'm glad you are advocating so strongly for your brother. Mm -hmm. I'm sure he'd be very proud of you standing up and making, making that, that statement. Uh, 
uh, as a physician, uh, I, I agree with you. It's so essential to make sure that as many people in, in Oregon have access to health care, especially those who find themselves particularly challenged because of either uh, physical or mental disability. And fortunately, in, in Oregon, with our Medicaid expansion, uh, more and more people have access to those essential services. Uh, everyone needs the, the dignity of, of treatment so that they can pursue uh, their, their goals and opportunities to the, to the very best. Uh, I, I will help support uh, more payments to those with disabilities. And fortunately, in Governor Brown's uh, uh, budget, uh, there was a significant decrease in allocations to taking care of disabled youth, disabled youth that importantly could stay at home with their parents, which I think should be a high priority. Governor Brown. Yes, thank you for having your voice be heard. And I think it's so important that you advocate uh, for your brother and others. And you are following on the footsteps of a very important person who's here in the audience, Governor Barbara Roberts. And she got her start uh, advocating for her son, who's autistic. And she brought to Oregon our uh, education law to ensure that all of our children regardless of their abilities, have access to a full and complete education. And having been a lawyer, I will continue to fight uh, to make sure that all of our students have access to the best education possible. But we can't stop there. We need to make sure that everyone, regardless of their abilities, are able to achieve and engage their full potential. And so once schooling opportunities are done, making sure that folks can participate in the workforce in an integrated way, and we're working on that in my administration, and we're working to make sure that people have an opportunity to lead a healthy and productive life. Mr. Starnes. This is a perfect segue for my last answer, uh, talking about having a specific fund that helps the most vulnerable populations, you know, the disabled, the mentally ill, our veterans, uh, chronic pain patients. I've been an advocate for chronic pain patients during this campaign, and it is shocking what is happening in Salem uh, for these issues. And also, besides being on the small rural school board of McKinsey, east of Eugene, I served on the Douglas ESD board, which you and your brother are probably familiar. ESDs serve all the vulnerable kids in Douglas County. There's 13 school districts. And each area has their own ESD. It's the little known school board that people don't remember, uh, Educational Service District. And we provide all the specialists that you need, speech pathologists and all those other folks. And we definitely need to have a specific fund for the most vulnerable populations. Thank you for the question. You answer your question? Mm -hmm. Yes. OK. Shasta, our next question. Thank you. Um, our next question is from Adi Solomon, or no, <laughs> that was just Adi. Uh, this one's from Dayson Saigo. Dayson, sorry. Um, he's 17 and from Pendleton. He wants to ask about education funding. Uh, uh, my question is for Governor Brown and Representative Bueller. Um, as a student who has, who has attended a large 5A public school, and as well as a small public charter school, Nikki Abbott Community School, mm -hmm. which is located on the Umatilla Indian Reservation, mm -hmm. uh, just outside of Pendleton, Oregon. Um, I've noticed a great discrepancy when it comes to teaching all students about Native American history, uh, historical trauma, natural resource management, and other topics that are vital to understanding uh, indigenous populations better. Um, as governor, what specific steps will you take to solve the issue of underrepresentation of tribal history in all schools across Oregon? Mm -hmm. Governor Brown. Thank you for that question. It's been my incredible honor to work with the nine uh, federally recognized sovereign nations in the great state of Oregon, and I served on the Legislative Commission for 17 years. And during that time, one of the bills that I am most proud of, of is a bill that uh, enabled tribal elders to teach uh, native languages in our public schools. And when I was visiting Pendleton about a year ago, I was able to see that in action in an early childhood education class, both native and non-native children learning a native tongue and teaching them tribal ways. Uh, 
this uh, last year, uh, I fought for Senate Bill 13, which makes sure that we have tribal curriculum integrated into all of our schools throughout the entire state of Oregon. And this is important because it makes education relevant for our Native American population and it engages them. And um, we were actually following on Pendleton's leadership because they did it several years ago and it's been very successful. Mr. Bueller. Yeah, thank you for your, your very important uh, question. Uh, uh, education is the important uh, issue in, in this campaign. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I think it's the single biggest failure of Governor Brown's time in, in office is their indifference to fixing the problems with our public schools and lack of diversity, uh, certainly among our, our teachers in K through 12 is, is a big problem as is uh, a classroom funding crisis. Uh, unfortunately, not enough dollars are getting into the classroom to expand cur curriculum, to make sure that we have enough professional development among our teachers, to make sure our teachers are diverse enough in understanding the cultures in our state. And, and Governor Brown, unfortunately, has failed to solve this problem, uh, uh, primarily because she's not been able to, to lead and take on some very powerful special interests in this state uh, which want to preserve the status quo, do not want innovation, and importantly, do not want to solve the classroom funding crisis that has plagued Oregon schools for much too long. Governor Brown, I'll give you rebuttal on that. Thank you. 30 seconds. Under my leadership, we've been able to increase funding for our schools, K through 12 schools, by 22%. Not enough, still more work to be done. Secondly, we have significantly invested in our underserved communities, uh, creating our Indian education plan, our African American plan, and of course our ELL plan. And the good news is, as a result of that work, in our underserved communities, we've seen an increase in our high school graduation rate by seven points in the last couple of years. And lastly, I created the Educator Advancement Council specifically to ensure that we have more educators coming into the system that reflect the diversity of our communities and the changing faces of Oregon. Mr. Bueller, 30 seconds. Uh, despite the, the claims from from Governor Brown, the, the facts is that uh, the unfortunate facts is that uh, even though we've increased the K through 12 budget, uh, uh, very few of those dollars are getting into the classroom, getting into students, getting into classroom learning because all too many of them are being diverted to retirement accounts. Uh, this is a problem that has to be solved, and despite uh, increased budgets and, and all the uh, the bills that Governor Brown references, the results of Oregon schools is that we're still in the bottom five. In the nation. We need to be in the top five. We're going to take a quick break. We're halfway through our debate live from the stage here at Roosevelt High School in North Portland. We want to alert all our stations across the state who are also uh, broadcasting this debate. We're about to take a quick two minute break and we will be right back after this.
Welcome back, everybody. Our debate continues. The debate for Oregon's future, all the questions tonight asked of our gubernatorial candidates coming from young people, high school students from across the state. We've already had some questions answered this evening in the first half hour, and now we continue in Shasta. Who's our next question from? Our next question is from 15-year-old Kai Schrask. He wants to ask you about teen suicides. He's mm -hmm. from Colton. Hello, my question is for Governor Brown and Representative Bueller. Oregon, um, in Oregon, the second leading cause of death for 10 to 24 year olds is suicide. According to the Oregon Health Authority, those numbers have been rising in the past decade and are currently well over the na national average. What plans do you have in particular beyond gun safety to, provide, to prevent youth from suicide and improve the overall mental health in high-risk groups such as male teens and the LGBTQ community? And we begin with Mr. Bueller. Yeah. Thank you for your very important question. It's an issue that I'm particularly passionate about. Uh, uh, fortunately, my uh, wife, Patty, has brought uh, this to my attention from her work from an organization uh, called Lines for Life, with it, which is an organization that works specifically on this issue uh, of youth suicide. Uh, and I've learned from that experience uh, that helplines uh, that people can call, youth specifically can call, and talk to, importantly, peers peers that understand the challenges of being a youth, the, the challenges of modern day uh, society with the rapid changes in families and communities, it creates great anxiety. Those are the th types of things as governor that I will encourage uh, in, in support in the future. And importantly, our healthcare system, especially our Medicaid system, was designed when it was being innovated to integrate more fully physical and, and mental health. Unfortunately, that has become high-centered, uh, and we need to make sure that that integration proceeds as planned. Governor. Thank you. Well, my heart goes out to all the young people that are struggling with mental health issues. Uh, I know it's an issue from talking to young people across the state. I know it's particularly a challenge for folks in our LGBT community, in our communities of color, and our rural communities. I think it's critically important that we have comprehensive uh, school-based clinics in our high schools around the state. I think it's absolutely key uh, that we have better access to school nurses in every single one of our schools. And I think it's absolutely imperative that we build a comprehensive uh, behavioral health system, not just for urban Oregon, but for rural Oregon. And that's going to take some key things. Um, making sure that we uh, create a pipeline of folks who want to practice in rural Oregon. It means providing maybe some financial incentives and, of course, uh, maybe some tax credits and a loan forgiveness. I'm absolutely committed because as a lawyer, I worked with a number of families that really struggled in this arena and will continue to fight to make sure that we have access to comprehensive behavioral health. Mr. Starnes. Just real briefly, since I'm not getting all the questions, I just want to say what you're looking for is hope. And I'm sorry if you've had people that you've lost or friends that you've lost. So as your next governor, I can promise you that we will provide more hope and more inspiration for you to reach your dreams, uh, be it job training or whatever you need, uh, I'll, I'll be there for you. All right. Shasta, our next question. Our next question is from 15-year-old Lo Rose Lawrence. She wants, she's from Portland and wants to ask about LGBTQ bullying. This question is for Governor Brown and Representative Bueller. The previous question mentioned how LGBT youth are at a higher risk for suicide. This is very true. They are also at a higher risk for being bullied. The 2017 Safe Schools report found that LGBT youth were twice as likely to experience bullying and harassment at school. LGBT youth additionally have three times more fear-based absences than their straight cisgender counterparts. What will you as governor do to make Oregon schools a safe place for LGBT youth? Governor Brown. So, thank you for the question. I know what it feels like to be treated differently because of my sexual orientation and because of my, my gender. And harassment and bullying in our schools is just not acceptable. No. And that's why I work to craft uh, with our Department of Education our safe and secure uh, schools policy to ensure that all of our LGBTQ students are safe 
in our schools. I'm very proud that that policy came out two weeks before the Obama administrations did, and it is now being used as a model across the country. Um, but it's critical that that be more than just words and that it be implemented in school districts across the state. I want to encourage anyone who's being bullied or harassed to talk to a teacher, a counselor, a principal, somebody that you trust. I think it's so important that you speak out, and I will continue to work to implement our uh, nation, national model policy here in Oregon. Mr. Beeler? Yeah. Uh, thank you for your question, your important question. As governor, I, I would continue the good work that Governor Brown has done on this issue. I, I do think she's had e uh, incredible insights and shown good progress with regards to it. And importantly, we also need to have uh, more counselors in, in our schools, counselors that can re relate to all kinds of students and also to make sure that we have diversity, not only among our, our students, but also our counselors and our teachers, so that there is a support network there available. Rose, did that answer your question? No, it did not. I would like to focus specifically on LGBT students and how they can experience bullying and harassment as a result of their sexuality. Well, Governor Brown, let me give you 30 seconds on that, and then, Mr. Beale, I'll give you the same. Governor Brown? Well, what I hear from students is that it's critically important that have, to have educators and counselors that reflect their life experiences. So my Educator Advancement Council is working on um, creating a more diverse educator pipeline and a counselor pipeline. Most of the educators are, reflect uh, my age and generation. And I think it's uh, important uh, that our educators and our school counselors reflect uh, the diversity of voices that are out there, particularly in the LGBTQ community and our communities of color and our rural communities. Mr. Bueller. Yeah, and, and I, I would add uh, to what Governor Brown says. One of the important roles of a governor is to educate, to use the soapbox, to explain to people that bullying uh, of any sort is just not tolerated. And I'm growing increasingly concerned about cyberbullying, which is particularly impactful for students in our schools right now. All right, Rose? Did that answer your question? No, I would like specifically to focus on LGBT bullying, not just bullying in general, but specifically for LGBT students. How will you fix that? Uh, I think it's really important that we, we, we try to answer the questions. I know our time is limited, but let's start that again. And Rose wants a specific answer. And Rose, restate that again. What will you as governor do to make Oregon schools a safe place for LGBT okay. youth? Okay, Governor Brown, 30 seconds. So um, two things, uh, we've passed legislation to prohibit bullying in our schools and then my education policy is specifically geared to making sure that our LGBTQ students are safe in their schools, that they can have access to uh, the appropriate facilities that they need and that there are policies in place in every single school around the state. My goal as governor is to make sure that those are being implemented, and that means working with our school superintendents. I meet with them quarterly and will continue to encourage them uh, to ensure that those policies are being implemented. Okay, Mr. Bueller, 30 seconds. I think we need to, to really understand the depth of the problem. Uh, and besides all of the other things we've talked about, is also having a way for these instances of bullying to be reported, and importantly, reported directly to the governor's office so we can be aware. And if it is a growing problem, or if there's particular schools where it is a, a particularly uh, 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 common occurrence, then we need to intervene right away. Okay, let's get to our next question. Rose, thank you. I would hire you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I think it speaks to the quality of the young people asking our questions tonight. Shasta? Yeah, our next question is from 17-year-old Tosha Katungano. She's from Portland, and she wants to ask you about recognizing trauma. First, I want to thank you for, hosting, for allowing Roosevelt to host this event. My question is for Governor... My question is for Governor Kate and Representative Bueller. In a multicultural school with no racial majority, many students have faced traumatic experiences mm -hmm. in schools and in their personal lives. Roosevelt High School, in collaboration with the University of Oregon through trauma-informed approach, is focusing on creating agency, resilience, and resolving barriers that are the result of trauma. As governor, 
how will you support schools and teachers to address to address trauma within classrooms to improve academic performances specifically for black and Hispanic students? I think we begin with Representative Bueller. Yeah. Great question. Uh, as you know, I can tell by your question, you uh, understand the issue with regards to uh, adverse childhood experiences and the long-term impact that can have. Uh, uh, and these childhood experiences can occur from a variety of causes. Uh, and certainly, uh, discriminatory practices is something that's all too common uh, in, in our society. And it's something we need to work diligently against. Uh, uh, but it's uh, not just enough to try to prevent. We also need to help those who have had these experiences uh, through resiliency and, and support and making sure that they have the tools and the resources and, and, uh, and the education uh, available to them that they have that ability to, to work through and to build a, a, a pattern uh, of resiliency. Governor Brown? So we're seeing schools and I'm hearing from students and I'm hearing from teachers across the state. Um, that all of our teachers are wanting to have access to uh, trauma-informed practices because they want to make sure that they are supporting their students in the best way possible. Some of it is, of course, due to uh, adverse childhood experiences, but some of it is also due to historical trauma that we've experienced in this nation, in this country, for several hundred years. Um, so we're working with superintendents and the Department of Education to make sure that our educators in the classroom have access to best practices and we're replicating those best practices between school districts. And so we will continue to do that and encourage the replication of best practices. Um, this is relatively new. It is a national issue, frankly, and it's, we're also hearing that it's happening in Canada as well. So we obviously need more data, but we need to make sure that all of our teachers, our educators, have access to trauma-informed practices. I know, Mr. Stern, do you wanted to answer this? Yeah, as a former school board member, we've, we've had to deal with this uh, not only in rural districts, but I understand here maybe at Roosevelt, too. I also went to Umqua Community College. I wasn't there for the mass shooting, but there was a lot of trauma there, too. So when I talked about specific funding for mental health uh, fund that Oregon needs, not just for, for trauma, but for all kinds of populations. I, was hate, I hate to bring it up in front of the media, but what specific revenue I'm talking about is uh, advertising tax that would be earmarked only for mental health. So hopefully we'd have more dollars to help your school and your teachers deal with trauma. Specific money for a specific source a specific money to do a specific job. All right. Our next question, Shasta. Sure. Did that answer your question? <laughs> um, uh, Victoria Rosquist uh, is 19 years old, and she's from Forest Grove, and she wants to ask about the foster care services. Hi there. Um, my question is for Governor Brown and Representative Bueller. As somebody who grew up in Oregon's foster care system, I've experienced firsthand the effects that inadequate services can have on a growing individual. So, uh, it inspired me to go on to speak out and uh, talk about what needs to change in our foster care system. So as governor, how do you plan to improve the foster care system? And specifically, how are you planning to address inadequate inadequacies in dental and mental health services? Governor Brown. Thank you. So what a lot of people don't know about me is that I used to practice law and I represented parents and children in the foster care system and what I saw was heart-wrenching and I saw the overloaded caseworkers and the attorneys with too many uh, children on their cases. As governor, uh, this is one of the issues that keeps me up every single night. So we have worked, brought on new leadership at the department work to make sure that all of our children in foster care are safe. We're working to safely and responsibly reduce caseloads because we have one and a half times the number of children in our foster care system. And we're working on recruiting and retaining foster parents and making sure they have the support and services that they need. 
So as governor, my focus is on the root causes of the foster care system. And right now in Oregon, that substance abuse and alcohol, about 75% of the kids are there because of one or more parents are using. Number two, domestic violence, and number three, housing. So I'm very committed to making sure that we have comprehensive uh, health care for all of our children. And as we work to implement uh, CCO 2.0, making sure minute. mental health is fully integrated into the system. Representative Bueller. Yeah. Uh, I feel strongly we need to save foster kids in, in Oregon. Uh, uh, Unfortunately, under the Brown administration, uh, too many vulnerable foster kids are, are, thro are slipping through the, the cracks. There has uh, been a devastating audit earlier this year with regards to the condition of our foster care system. Now, these are 8,000 of Oregon's most vulnerable kids, kids who literally have no one else to turn to. And what this audit showed is that for years, there's been abuse and neglect and indifference, importantly, to solving this abuse and neglect. Little boys and girls have been starved and beaten and worse. Last legislative session, when this audit came out, I said, everything else can wait. We have to solve this problem. I called for a rapid improvement team to implement the 24 recommendations and solve it. Unfortunately, Governor Brown rejected that, said I was just playing politics. Fortunately, when others intervened, she eventually allocated the necessary resources to start making progress on this. We'll do uh, some rebuttal, 30-second rebuttal on that. I think when someone tells a whopper, it's appropriate that uh, people have an understanding of what's really happening. <laughs> so I have been working in this system um, for over 20 years. I know there is a lot more work to be done. And I fought as a legislator. I worked uh, with Republicans to pass legislation to improve the foster care system. In uh, 2015, 2016, we fought for more funding for the system to reduce case caseloads. Unlike my opponent, I didn't start when I was running for governor. I've been working to improve the system for the last 20 years. Representative Bueller. Well, I, I appreciate uh, Governor Brown's effort uh, at this issue, but it's clearly not enough. Oregon's foster care system is one of the worst in the nation, and the audit uh, called it out. Uh, the audit not only talked about uh, the care that these kids aren't receiving, but also uh, the fear-based culture in the organization, a, a culture which is known for intimidation and even muzzling frontline care workers who are just trying to do their best to take care of these kids. That's not the type of culture I want to see in our state government, and that's not the type of state government any Oregonians uh, should ever accept. Shasta, let's get to our question. I know we, we want to try to get to all our students within the, with this hour sure. if we can. Um, I, my question wasn't addressed. Uh, specifically, my concern is how are you planning to address the inadequacies in dental and mental health care for foster, care, uh, foster kids? 30, 30 more seconds. Go ahead, Governor Brown, then we'll go to Representative Bueller. So we're working on new contracts with the coordinated care organizations, which are responsible providing uh, health care to our most vulnerable children. And we are working at fully integrating both oral and comprehensive behavioral health. I will be holding those coordinated care organizations accountable to delivering better outcomes for not just our foster care uh, children, but for all of our children in the state of Oregon. And it's because of the fight that I have led to make sure that 430,000 Oregonians and 15,000 children now have coverage, that right. they will have access to health care. Representative Bueller, 30 seconds. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Uh, not just foster kids, but all kids in Oregon have one of the lowest rates of well child checks, both uh, physical and dental. Uh, Unlike Governor Brown, I would make sure that payments, incentive payments that go to CCOs are tied to specific metrics to improving that situation and making sure as many kids in Oregon get their annual well child check. We want to get uh, some of our students who haven't asked a question, and I'm going to ask you instead of the minute, a 30 second response so we can get to some more of our our, our uh, youth here who want to ask the questions. Go ahead, Shasta. Yes, yeah, Sal in the jar Oop, is 16, and he comes from Tiger. He wants to ask about childhood homelessness. My question is for all three candidates. The number of homeless students in Oregon continues to grow. Beaverton School District, my school district, has the highest number in Oregon, oh. at 1,522. Oh. 
If elected, what steps will you take to combat the issue of child homelessness in Oregon? Mr. Starnes, we'll start with you, 30 seconds. Okay. Um, I'm the only candidate during the campaign who's actually camped outside with the homeless in Eugene for two nights. And then we went to the city council meeting in Eugene and advocated for more services for them. And I have a proposal that's a specific shelter fund that would have a vacancy fee because we have so many vacant homes and commercial properties that should have a fee to get them back into the circulation and get this shelter for everyone. So it's just 30 seconds, sorry. Okay. Governor Brown? Every child deserves a warm, safe, secure place to call home. Every Oregonian deserves a home. That's why since I've become governor, we've, we're building over 14,000 units. And my goal over the next two years is to invest $370 million and to make sure that we get all of our children. And statewide numbers is about 22,000 uh, off the streets and into uh, secure homes. Representative Bueller. Homelessness in Oregon has uh, become a humanitarian crisis, a uh, public health crisis, and increasingly a public safety crisis. And it's grown much worse with Governor Brown in office. In fact, unfortunately, last month, Oregon was named number one in the nation, number one in the nation for the number of homeless youth. And one of the reasons for that is uh, our foster care system. Unfortunately, way too many foster kids do not have that support to transition to independence. It's one of many problems that we have to solve with regards to homelessness in Oregon. Did that answer your question? Yes, thank you. It thank did. You. Okay. Okay, Shasta, we have another question. Once again, these are the couple lightning round 30-second responses to these questions. <laughs> so, 12-year-old Genesis Gomez is our youngest questioner. She's from Portland, and she wants to ask about farm worker safety. My question is for Governor Brown and Representative Bueller. As someone who had, who's had family members employed as farm workers, I know how hard they work and the kinds of chemicals they are exposed to. As governor, what will you do to ensure that farm workers have in adequate health care? And do you believe farm workers should receive health care? regardless of their immigration status? And we'll begin with you, Representative Bueller. Yeah, thanks. thanks 30 your, seconds. Thanks for your question. I, I think it's a, important that uh, as governor, you try to keep everyone in safe, uh, no matter if you're here as a citizen or if you're here undocumented. Uh, unfortunately, under Governor Brown's administration, the Department of Environmental Quality, which has a lot of regulatory influence over these issues, has, has been badly mismanaged. There's been turnover of leadership and a lot of conflict. Uh, I would stabilize that situation and, and make sure that that agency is, is doing their their statutory job in making sure that they keep people safe. Governor Brown. Thank you. My administration has already worked to strengthen uh, farm worker protections and ensure that they are safer from toxic chemicals. More work to be done. But in addition to that, I fought to make sure that every woman in this state, regardless of her immigration status, has access to the full complement of reproductive health services, including our immigrant women. I also fought to make sure that every child, regardless of their immigration status, has access to health care. And I'm going to continue to fight because I believe so strongly that we need to oppose ballot measure 105 and ensure that Oregon remains a welcoming and inclusive state for all. We are, we are, going, to, we are going to go to some closing statements right now. Each candidate they selected, we had a draw. Representative Bueller will go first. You each have a minute for closing statements, and we'll go right across the stage. Representative Bueller, closing well, statement. Thank you, thank you for your attention uh, tonight. Uh, elections are about choices, and as you can see from your experience uh, tonight, uh, this election you have a choice, a stark choice between uh, a status quo governor who has really failed to lead and solve some of these big problems in the state, our problems with regards to our education system, taking care of those who are mentally ill, our foster kids, and importantly, finding a solution to our classroom funding crisis. In contrast, uh, uh, I'll lead with an open mind, a caring heart, and a thoughtful voice. I'll uh, reject these narrow partisan labels that I believe increasingly divide us and don't define us. And I'll be a governor 
who challenges the status quo, is independent-minded and leads for all of Oregon, uh, no matter who you are, where you live, who you live, uh, and no matter how you're registered to vote, Democrat, Independent, or Republican. And tonight, I ask for your vote. Governor Brown. Actions speak louder than words. I am running for re-election because I believe that by working together, we can build a better Oregon. Under my administration, we have the lowest unemployment rate in Oregon's history. But you know what? There's too many families struggling to make ends meet, and a lot of seniors worried they're going to lose their homes. I am the only candidate in this race with a track record of bringing Republicans and Democrats together, urban and rural Oregonians together to tackle the problems facing Oregon. We need to invest in education, not cut our teachers' retirement, and invest in an education in a way that all of our children can graduate from high school with a plan for their future and the tools to compete in a global economy. We need to make sure that everyone in Oregon has access to health care, especially our children. Now is not the time for us to go backwards. We have to keep Oregon moving forward. I would ask for your support and your vote again in November. Thank you. Mr. Starnes. I want to thank all the brave students yes. for coming up and asking these questions. And I'll stay. Thank you. And I'm going to stay and, and, and answer the rest of the questions. I'm sorry I didn't have enough time to answer them thoroughly. I'm the only single-payer candidate on the election on this November ballot. Um, and we will not have PERS reform or health care reform until we have campaign finance reform. So you'll see that I'm the only candidate talking about getting the big money out of politics. And I've limited my donations to $100 per person so that regular working people can donate and not be drowned out by billionaires and special interest groups. We have got to change the system rather, regardless of the party. And I, I, I only need the largest third of you to vote for me. <laughs> okay? That's the debate for Oregon. A big thanks to our young people for asking Thank such great questions much. tonight. Thank and thanks to our Thank candidates as well. Much. And thanks to all of you gathered here and watching at home on television. Make your vote count. Register to vote. Yes. Thank you. Yes.